Nile River. Nile River the longest river in the world, called the father of African rivers. It rises south of the equator and flows northward through northeastern Africa to drain into the Mediterranean Sea. It has a length of about 4,132 miles, 6,650 kilometers, and drains an area estimated at 1,293,000 square miles, 3,349,000 square kilometers. Its basin includes parts of Tanzania, Burundi, Rwanda, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Kenya, Uganda, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Sudan, and the cultivated part of Egypt. Its most distant source is the Kajira River in Burundi. The Nile is formed by three principal streams, the Blue Nile, Arabic, Al-Bar al-Azraq, Amaric, Abay, and the Atbara, Arabic, Naratbara, which flow from the highlands of Ethiopia, and the White Nile, Arabic, Al-Bar al-Abad, the headstreams of which flow into Lakes Victoria and Albert. The name Nile is derived from the Greek Nilos, Latin, Nilus, which probably originated from the Semitic root Nahal, meaning a valley or a river valley and hence, by an extension of the meaning, a river. The fact that the Nile, unlike other great rivers known to them, flowed from the south northward and was in flood at the warmest time of the year was an unsolved mystery to the ancient Egyptians and Greeks. The ancient Egyptians called the river R or or, Coptic, E aero, black, in allusion to the color of the sediments carried by the river when it is in flood. Nile mud is black enough to have given the land itself its oldest name, Kem or Kemi, which also means black and signifies darkness. In the Odyssey, the epic poem written by the Greek poet Homer, 7th century BCE, Aegyptos is the name of the Nile, masculine, as well as the country of Egypt, feminine, through which it flows. The Nile in Egypt and Sudan is now called Al Nil, Alba, and Bar Al Nil or Nar Al Nil. The Nile River basin, which covers about one tenth of the area of the continent, served as the stage for the evolution and decay of advanced civilizations in the ancient world. On the banks of the river dwelled people who were among the first to cultivate the arts of agriculture and to use the plough. The basin is bordered on the north by the Mediterranean, on the east by the Red Sea Hills and the Ethiopian Plateau, on the south by the East African Highlands, which include Lake Victoria, a Nile source, and on the west by the less well-defined watershed between the Nile, Chad, and Congo basins, extending northwest to include the Mara Mountains of Sudan, the al jilf al kabir Plateau of Egypt, and the Libyan Desert, part of the Sahara. The availability of water from the Nile throughout the year, combined with the area's high temperatures, makes possible intensive cultivation along its banks. Even in some of the regions in which the average rainfall is sufficient for cultivation, marked annual variations in precipitation often make cultivation without irrigation risky. The Nile River is also a vital waterway for transport, especially at times when motor transport is not feasible, for example, during the flood season. Improvements in air, rail, and highway facilities beginning in the 20th century, however, greatly reduced dependency on the waterway. Physiography of Nile River It is thought that approximately 30 million years ago the early Nile, then a much shorter stream, had its sources at about 18 degrees to 20 degrees in latitude. Its main head stream may then have been the present Atbra River. To the south lay the vast enclosed drainage system containing the large Lake Sud. According to one theory on the evolution of the Nile system, about 25,000 years ago the East African drainage to Lake Victoria developed an outlet to the north, which sent its water into Lake Sud. With the accumulation of sediments over a long period, the water level of this lake rose gradually, and, as a result of the overflow, the lake was drained, spilling over to the north. The overflow waters of Lake Sud, rapidly forming a riverbed, linked the two major parts of the Nile system thus unifying the drainage from Lake Victoria to the Mediterranean Sea. The basin of the present-day Nile falls naturally into seven major regions, the Lake Plateau of East Africa, the Al-Jabal, Al-Jabal, 
the White Nile, the Blue Nile, the Atbra, the Nile north of Khartoum in Sudan and Egypt, and the Nile Delta. The Lake Plateau region of East Africa produces a number of head streams and lakes that feed the White Nile. It is generally agreed that the Nile has several sources rather than one. The furthest head stream may be regarded as the Kajira River, which rises in the highlands of Burundi near the northern tip of Lake Tanganyika and then flows into Lake Victoria. The Nile proper, however, rises from Lake Victoria, the second largest freshwater lake in the world, which has an area of more than 26,800 square miles and forms a huge but shallow lake. The Nile begins near Jindia, Uganda, on the north shore of the lake, flowing northward over Ripon Falls, which has been submerged since the completion of the Owen Falls Dam, now the Naluba Dam, in 1954. The northward stretch of the river, known as the Victoria Nile, enters the shallow lake Kioga, Kioga, and, passing through its swamp vegetation, flows out in a westerly direction, descending into the East African rift system over Murchison, Kabaliga, falls before entering the northern end of Lake Albert. Unlike Lake Victoria, Lake Albert is a deep, narrow lake with mountainous sides. There the waters of the Victoria Nile unite with the lake waters, passing northward as the Albert Nile, a portion of the river, somewhat wider and slower, that is fringed with swampy growth and is navigable for steamers. The Nile enters South Sudan at Nimil, and from the Tajuba, a distance of some 120 miles, it is called the Al Jabal River or Mountain Nile. This section of the river descends through narrow gorges and over a series of rapids including the Fuller, Fola, Rapids, and receives additional water from short tributaries on both banks, it is not commercially navigable. Below Juba the river flows over a large and very level clay plain, which extends through a narrow valley with hill country on either side, lying some 1,200 to 1,500 feet, 370 to 460 meters, above sea level and through the center of which flows the main stream. As the gradient of the Nile there is only one colon 13 comma the great volume of additional water that arrives during the rainy season cannot be accommodated by the river, and, as a result, during those months almost the entire plain becomes inundated. This circumstance promotes the growth of enormous quantities of aquatic vegetation, including tall grasses and sedges, notably papyrus that collectively is called Sud, literally meaning barrier, and the region is known as Al Sud. These great masses of vegetation, the growth of which is exacerbated by the gentle flow of the water, break off and float downstream, effectively choking the main stream and blocking the navigable channels. Channels have become further choked since the 1950s by the rapid spread of the South American water hyacinth. This basin receives drainage from numerous other streams. The Algazel Gazelle, river flows in from western South Sudan, joining the Al Jabal at Lake No, a large lagoon where the main stream takes an easterly direction. The waters of the Algazel undergo extensive loss through evaporation, and only a small proportion of them ever reach the Nile. A short distance above Malal, the main stream is joined by the Sobat, Barra in Ethiopia and downstream from there the river is called the White Nile. The regime of the Sobat is quite different from the steady flowing Al Jabal, with a maximum flow occurring between July and December, the annual flow of the Sobat is about equal to the water lost through evaporation in Al Sud marshes. The White Nile, about 500 miles in length, supplies some 15% of the total volume entering Lake Nasser, called Lake Nubia in Sudan downstream. It begins at Malakal and joins the Blue Nile at Khartoum, receiving no tributaries of importance. Throughout this stretch the White Nile is a wide placid stream, often having a narrow fringe of swamps. The valley is wide and shallow, thus causing a considerable loss of water by both evaporation and seepage. The Blue Nile drains from the lofty Ethiopian plateau where it descends in a north-northwesterly direction from a height of about 6,000 feet above sea level. Its reputed source is a spring, considered holy by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, from which a small stream, 
the Abbe, flows down to Lake Tana, Tana, a fairly shallow lake with an area of about 1,400 square miles. The Abbe leaves Lake Tana in a southeasterly direction, flowing through a series of rapids and plunging through a deep gorge. It is estimated that the lake supplies the river with only about 7% of its total flow, but this water is important since it is silt-free. The river then flows west and northwest through Sudan to join the White Nile at Khartoum. In the greater part of its course from Lake Tana down to the Sudanese plains, it runs in a canyon that in places is 4,000 feet below the general level of the plateau. All of its tributaries also run in deep ravines. While the White Nile at Khartoum is a river of almost constant volume, the Blue Nile has a pronounced flood season, late July to October, caused by the summer monsoon rains over the Ethiopian plateau and the rapid runoff from its numerous tributaries. Historically, it was this surge that contributed most to the annual Nile floods in Egypt. The Atbara River, the last tributary of the Nile, flows into the main stream nearly 200 miles north of Khartoum. It rises in Ethiopia at heights of 6,000 to 10,000 feet above sea level, not far from Gonda, to the north of Lake Tana. The two principal tributaries that feed the Atbara are the Angarab, Arabic, Bar al Salam, and the Tex, Amar, colon terrible, Arabic, Narsatit. The Tex is the most important of these, having a basin more than double the area of the Atbara itself. It rises among the high peaks of the Ethiopian highlands and flows north through a spectacular gorge to join the Atbara in Sudan. For most of its course in Sudan, the Atbara is well below the general level of the plains. Between the plains and the river, the ground is eroded and cut into by gullies formed by water running off the plains after rainfall. The Atbara rises and falls rapidly, like the Blue Nile. In flood it becomes a large, muddy river, and in the dry season it is a string of pools. The Atbara contributes more than 10% of the total annual flow of the Nile, but almost all of this comes in the period of July to October. Along the stretch of the Nile north of Khartoum, which is sometimes called the United Nile, two parts can be distinguished. The first part, which stretches from Khartoum to Lake Nasser, is about 830 miles in length, though the river flows through a desert region where rainfall is negligible, although some irrigation takes place along its banks. The second part includes Lake Nasser which contains the water held back by the Aswan High Dam in Egypt, and below the dam the irrigated Nile Valley and Delta region. Below Khartoum, the Nile flows 50 miles northward until it reaches, say Bluka, Sababka, the site of the sixth and highest cataract. The the river cuts through hills for a distance of 8 miles. Flowing northward at Baba, the river takes an S-bend, in the middle of which, from Mabahamid to Kirti and al Daba, Deba, it flows southwestward for about 170 miles. The fourth cataract is in the middle of this stretch. At the end of this bend, at Dongola, it again resumes a northerly direction, crossing the third cataract and flowing into Lake Nasser. For the 800 miles from the sixth cataract to Lake Nasser, the riverbed alternates between gentle stretches and series of rapids. Outcropping crystalline rocks that cross the course of the Nile cause the five famous cataracts. Because of these cataracts, the river is not completely navigable, although sections between the cataracts are navigable by sailing vessels and by river steamers. Lake Nasser, the second largest man-made lake in the world, has a potential maximum area of 2,600 square miles. It inundates more than 300 miles of the Nile's course, including the second cataract near the border between Egypt and Sudan. Immediately below the high dam is the first cataract, which was once an area of rock-strewn rapids that partially obstructed the flow of the river. From the first cataract to Cairo, a distance of about 500 miles, the Nile flows northward in a relatively narrow flat-bottomed groove, sinuous in outline and generally incised into the underlying limestone plateau, which averages 10 to 14 miles in width and is enclosed by scarps that rise in places to heights of 1,500 feet above the river level. 
for the last 200 miles of its course before reaching Cairo, the Nile shows a strong tendency to hug the eastern edge of the valley floor, so that the greater part of the cultivated land is found on the left bank. North of Cairo the Nile enters the Delta region, a level triangular lowland. In the first century c the Greek geographer Strabo recorded the Nile as fanning out into seven delta distributaries. The flow has since been controlled and redirected, so that the river now flows across the delta to the sea through two main distributaries, the Rosetta and the Damietta, Bumyat, branches. The Nile Delta, the prototype of all deltas, comprises a gulf of the prehistoric Mediterranean Sea that has been filled in, it is composed of silt brought mainly from the Ethiopian plateau. The silt varies in its thickness from 50 to 75 feet and comprises the most fertile soil in Africa. It forms a monotonous plain that extends 100 miles from north to south, its greatest east-west extent being 155 miles between Alexandria and Port Said, altogether it covers an area twice that of the Nile Valley in Upper Egypt. The land surface slopes gently to the sea, falling some 50 to feet from Cairo in a gentle gradient. In the north, on the seaward border, are a number of shallow brackish lagoons and salt marshes, Lake Mert, Beherat Merit, Lake Edku, Beherat Edku, Lake Bruis, Beherat Al Bruis, and Lake Manzala, Beherat Al Manzala. Climate and hydrology Almost no area within the Nile Basin experiences a true equatorial or a true Mediterranean type of climate. While the Nile Basin in Sudan and Egypt is rainless during the northern winter, its southern parts and the highlands of Ethiopia experience heavy rain, more than 60 inches, 1,520 mm during the northern summer. Most of the region falls under the influence of the northeast trade winds between October and May, which causes the prevailing aridity of most of the basin. Tropical climates with well-distributed rainfall are found in parts of the East African Lakes region and southwestern Ethiopia. In the lake region there is little variation throughout the year in the mean temperature, which ranges from 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 16 to 27 degrees Celsius, depending on locality and altitude. Relative humidity, which varies similarly, is about 80% on the average. Similar climatic conditions prevail over the western and southern parts of South Sudan, which receive as much as 50 inches of rain spread over a nine-month period, March to November, the maximum occurring in August. The humidity reaches its highest at the peak of the rainy season and reaches its low level between January and March. Maximum temperatures are recorded during the dry season, December to February and minimums occur in July and August. To the north, the rainy season gets shorter, and the amount of rainfall decreases. The rainy season, which occurs in the south from April to October, is confined to July and August in south-central Sudan, where three seasons may be distinguished. The first of these is the pleasant, cool, dry winter, which occurs from December to February, this is followed by hot and very dry weather from March to June, and this is followed, in turn, by a hot rainy period from July to October. The minimum temperature occurs in January and the maximum in May or June, when it rises to a daily average of 105 degrees Fahrenheit, 41 degrees Celsius, in Khartoum. Only about 10 inches of rainfall occurs annually in the Al Jazeera area, between the White and Blue Nile rivers, as compared with more than 21 inches at Dakar, Senegal, which is at the same latitude. North of Khartoum less than 5 inches of rain falls annually, an amount insufficient for permanent settlement. In June and July parts of Sudan are frequently visited by squalls during which strong winds carry large quantities of sand and dust. These storms, which are of 3 to 4 hours duration, are called haboobs. A desert-type climate exists over most of the remainder of the area north to the Mediterranean. The principal characteristics of northern Sudan and the desert of Egypt are aridity, a dry atmosphere, and a considerable seasonal, as well as diurnal, temperature range in Upper Egypt. 
temperatures often surpass 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Celsius, in as one, for example. The average daily maximum in June is 117 degrees Fahrenheit, 47 degrees Celsius. Winter temperatures decrease to the north. Egypt has what could be called a winter season, which occurs from November to March, when the daily maximum temperature in Cairo is 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 to 24 degrees Celsius, and the night minimum is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. 10 degrees Celsius. The rainfall in Egypt is of Mediterranean origin and falls mostly in the winter, the amount decreasing toward the south. From 8 inches on the coast, it falls gradually to a little over an inch in Cairo and to less than an inch in Upper Egypt. During the spring, from March to June, depressions from the Sahara or along the coast travel east, causing dry southerly winds which sometimes results in a condition called Kamsen. These are sandstorms or dust storms during which the atmosphere becomes hazy, on occasion they may persist for three or four days, at the end of which the phenomenon of a blue sun may be observed. The periodic rise of the Nile remained an unsolved mystery until the discovery of the role of the tropical regions in its regime. In effect, there was little detailed knowledge about the hydrology of the Nile before the 20th century, except for early records of the river level that the ancient Egyptians had made with the aid of Nilometers, gauges formed by graduated scales cut in natural rocks or in stone walls, some of which still remain. Today, however, no other river of comparable size has a regime that is so well known. The discharge of the main stream, as well as the tributaries, is regularly measured. The Nile swells in the summer, the floods rising as a result of the heavy tropical rains in Ethiopia. In South Sudan the flood begins as early as April, but the effect is not felt at Aswan, Egypt, until July. The water then starts to rise and continues to do so throughout August and September, with the maximum occurring in mid-September. At Cairo the maximum is delayed until October. The level of the river then falls rapidly through November and December. From March to May the level of the river is at its lowest. Although the flood is a fairly regular phenomenon, it occasionally varies in volume and date. Before it was possible to regulate the river, years of high or low flood, particularly a sequence of such years, resulted in crop failure, famine, and disease. Following the river from its sources, an estimate can be made of the contribution of the various lakes and tributaries in the Nile flood. Lake Victoria forms the first great natural reservoir of the Nile system. The heavy rainfall over the lake is nearly balanced by surface evaporation, and the outflow from the lake, some 812 billion cubic feet, 23 billion cubic meters comes mostly from the rivers draining into it, particularly the Kajira. This water then flows via the Victoria Nile into Lake Kyoga, where there is little net loss of water, and then into Lake Albert. Water lost by evaporation is more than balanced by the rainfall over the lake and the inflow from other smaller streams, notably the Semaliki. Thus, the annual outflow from Lake Albert to the Al Jabal River is about 918 billion cubic feet. In addition to the water it receives from the Great Lakes, the torrential tributaries of the Al Jabal supply it with nearly 20% of its water. The discharge of the Al Jabal varies little throughout the year because of the regulatory effect of the large swamps and lagoons of the Al Sud region. About half of its water is lost in this stage by seepage and evaporation, but the flow of the Sobat River into the main stream just upstream of Malal nearly makes up for the loss. The White Nile provides a regular supply of water throughout the year. During April and May, when the main stream is at its lowest level, more than 80% of its water comes from the White Nile. The White Nile obtains its water in roughly equal amounts from two main sources. The first source is the rainfall on the East African plateau of the previous summer. The second source is the drainage of southwestern Ethiopia through the Sobat contributed mainly by its two head streams, the Barra and the Biba, that enters the main stream below Al-Sud. The annual flood of the Sobat, 
a consequence of the Ethiopian summer rains, is to a great extent responsible for the variations in the level of the White Nile. The rains that swell its upper valley begin in April and cause widespread inundation over the 200 miles of plains through which the river passes, thus delaying the arrival of the rainwater in its lower reaches until November to December. Relatively small amounts of the mud carried by the Serbats flood reach the White Nile. The Blue Nile, the most important of the three great Ethiopian affluents, plays an overwhelming part in bringing the Nile flood to Egypt. It receives to tributaries in Sudan, the Ra'ad and the Dinda, both of which also originate in Ethiopia. The regime of the Blue Nile is distinguished from that of the White Nile by the more rapid passage of its flood water into the main stream. The river level begins to rise in June, reaching a maximum level at Khartoum in about the first week in September. The Atbara River draws its flood water from the rains on the northern part of the Ethiopian plateau as does the Blue Nile. While the floods of the two streams occur at the same time, the Blue Nile is a perennial stream, while the Atbara, as mentioned, shrinks to a series of pools in the dry season. The swelling of the Blue Nile causes the first floodwaters to reach central Sudan in May. The maximum is reached in August, after which the level falls again. The rise at Khartoum average is more than 20 feet. When the Blue Nile is in flood, it holds back the White Nile water, turning it into an extensive lake and delaying its flow. The Jabal al Aladam south of Khartoum increases this ponding effect. The peak of the flood does not enter Lake Nasser until late July or August, when the average daily inflow from the Nile rises to some 25.1 billion cubic feet. Out of this amount the Blue Nile accounts for almost 70%, the Atbara more than 20%, and the White Nile 10%. In early May the inflow drops to its minimum, the total discharge of 1.6 billion cubic feet per day comes mainly from the White Nile and the remainder from the Blue Nile. On the average, about 85% of the water in Lake Nasser comes from the Ethiopian plateau, and the rest is contributed by the East African Lake Plateau system. Lake Nasser has an enormous storage capacity more than 40 cubic miles, about 168 cubic kilometers although the content of the reservoir varies with the extent of the annual flood upstream. Because it is situated in a very hot and dry region, however, Lake Nasser can lose up to 10% of its volume to evaporation annually when it is full, decreasing to about one-third that amount when it is at minimum capacity. Plant and animal life in the areas where no irrigation is practiced, Different zones of plant life may be roughly divided according to the amount of rainfall. Tropical rainforest is found along the Nile Congo Divide, in parts of the Lake Plateau, and in southwestern Ethiopia. Heat and copious rainfall produce thick forests with a great variety of tropical trees and plants, including ebony, banana, rubber, bamboo, and coffee shrub. Mixed woodland and grassland, savanna, characterized by a sparse growth of thinly foliaged trees of medium height and a ground covering of grass and perennial herbs, occurs in large parts of the Lake Plateau, in parts of the Ethiopian Plateau, in the area that fringes the Blue Nile near al Ruzeris, and in the southern al Ghazal River region. On the Sudanese plains, a mixture of thin bush, thorny trees, and open grassland prevails. This area is swampy during the rainy season, particularly in the Al Sud region of central South Sudan, which has an area of nearly 100,000 square miles. The vegetation there includes papyrus, tall bamboo like grasses, reed maysam batch, ortra, water lettuce, a species of convolvulus, and the South American water hyacinth. North of latitude 10 degrees and there occurs a belt of thorny savanna or orchard shrub country characterized by small scattered tree stands, thorn bush, and, after rain, grass and herbs. North of this, however, rainfall decreases and the vegetation thins out, so that the countryside is dotted with small thorny shrubs, mostly acacias. From Khartoum northward there is true desert, with scanty and irregular rainfall and no permanent vegetation at all except for a few stunted shrubs. 
grasses and small herbs may be scattered along drainage lines after rainfall, but these die away in a few weeks. In Egypt the vegetation near the Nile is almost entirely the result of irrigation and cultivation. Many varieties of fish are found in the Nile system. Notable among those found in the lower Nile system are the Nile perch, which may attain a weight of more than 175 pounds, the bolti, a species of tilapia, the barbel, several species of catfish, the elephant snout fish, and the tigerfish, or water leopard. Most of these species and the sardine like haplochromis, the lungfish, and the mudfish are found as far upstream as Lake Victoria. The common eel penetrates as far south as Khartoum, and the spiny eel is found in Lake Victoria. The Nile crocodile, found in most parts of the river, has not yet penetrated the lakes of the upper Nile basin. Other reptiles found in the Nile basin include the soft shelled turtle, three species of monitor lizard, and some 30 species of snakes, of which more than half are venomous. The hippopotamus, once common throughout the Nile system, is now found only in the El Sud region and to the south. Many schools of fish that fed in the waters of the Nile in Egypt during the flood season have been reduced or have disappeared since the construction of the Aswan High Dam. Most of the species of the Nile fish were migrants and the dam has prevented many from migrating to Lake Nasa. The diminution in the number of anchovies in the eastern Mediterranean has also been attributed to the serious reduction in the outflow of waterborne nutrients due to the dam. Lake Nasa, however, has been developed into a commercial fishery, where the Nile perch and other species thrive. People The Nile flows through regions inhabited by a wide variety of peoples, from the Bantu-speaking populations of the Lake Victorian area to the Arabs of the Sahara and the Nile Delta. The wide ethnic and linguistic diversity is mirrored in the numerous ecological relationships between these peoples and the river. In South Sudan are Nilotic-speaking peoples including the Shik, Dinka, and Nua. The Shik are sedentary agriculturists whose land is watered by the Nile. The Dinka and Nua are pastoralists whose movements are dictated by the Nile's seasonal flow. They migrate with their herds from the river's shores during the dry season, to high ground during the wet season, and back to the river when the dry season returns. Perhaps nowhere is the relationship between people and the river so intense as in the Nile floodplain. The average population density in the cultivated parts of the floodplain south of the delta is more than 3,320 per square mile, 1,280 per square kilometer. This great population, composed mostly of peasant farmers, Fairhin, can survive only by making the most careful use of the available land and water. Before the completion of the Aswan High Dam, the large quantities of silt washed down from the rich highlands of Ethiopia were deposited by the floodwaters in Egypt, where the fertility of the riverine lands was maintained over the centuries, despite intensive cultivation. Thus, a vital feature in the life of the Egyptian people was the river's behavior, since a good harvest followed a good flood, and a poor flood often meant a later food shortage. Economy Irrigation as an Aid to Cultivation Irrigation almost certainly originated in Egypt. A particular phenomenon that makes irrigation from the Nile feasible is the slope of the land from south to north, which amounts to about 5 inches to the mile, as well as the slightly greater slope downward from the river banks to the desert on either side. The first use of the Nile for irrigation in Egypt began when seeds were sown in the mud left after the annual flood water had subsided. With the passing of time, these practices were refined until a traditional method emerged, known as basin irrigation. Under this system, the fields on the flat floodplain were divided by earth banks into a series of large basins of varying size but some as large as 50,000 acres 20, hectares. During the annual Nile flood, the basins were flooded and the water, allowed to remain on the fields for up to six weeks. The water was then permitted to drain away as the river level fell, and a thin deposit of rich Nile silt was left on the land each year. Autumn and winter crops were then sown in the waterlogged soil. 
Under this system only one crop per year could be grown on the land, and the farmer was always at the mercy of annual fluctuations in the size of the flood. Along the river banks and on land above flood level, some perennial irrigation was always possible where water could be lifted directly from the Nile or from irrigation channels by such traditional means as the Shadoff, a counterbalanced lever device that uses a long pole, the Sakia, Sakia, or Persian water wheel, or the Archimedes screw. Modern mechanical pumps have begun to replace such human or animal operated devices. Because of the limitations of the basin method of irrigation, perennial irrigation, in which the water is controlled so that it can be made to run into the land at regular intervals throughout the year, has largely replaced it. Perennial irrigation was made possible by the completion of several barrages and waterworks before the end of the 19th century. By the beginning of the 20th century, the canal system had been remodeled and the first dam at Aswan had been completed see below dams and reservoirs. Since the completion of the Aswan High Dam, virtually all formerly basin irrigated land in Upper Egypt has been brought under perennial irrigation. While the people of Sudan make use of the waters of the Nile for irrigation, reliance on the river is not absolute, as a fair amount of rainfall occurs in the southern parts. Basin irrigation from the Nile floods is used to a small extent but it is less satisfactory in these areas because the surface is more uneven, with less deposition of silt, the area inundated also varies from year to year. Since about 1950 these traditional methods of irrigation have been largely displaced by diesel engine pumps, which are used on large tracts on the banks of either the main Nile or, above Khartoum, the White Nile. Perennial irrigation in Sudan began with the completion of the combined dam and barrage near Sa on the Blue Nile in 1925. This made possible the irrigation of the area of the clay plain called Al Jazeera between the two Niles south of Khartoum. The success of this attempt encouraged the construction of more dams and barrages for large scale irrigation schemes. Dams and reservoirs In 1843, it was decided to build a series of diversion dams, barrages or weirs, across the Nile at the head of the delta about 12 miles downstream from Cairo, so as to raise the level of water upstream to supply the irrigation canals and to regulate navigation. This delta barrage scheme was not fully completed until 1861, after which it was extended and improved. It may be regarded as marking the beginning of modern irrigation in the Nile Valley. There's if to barrage, nearly halfway along the Damietta branch of the Delta Ik Nile, was added to this system in 1901. In 1902 the Asit barrage, more than 200 miles upstream from Cairo, was completed. This was followed in 1909 by the barrage at Isna, Esna, about 160 miles above Asit and in 1930 by the barrage at Naj Hammadi, 150 miles above Asit. The first dam at Aswan was constructed between 1899 and 1902, it has a series of four locks to allow navigation. The dam has twice been enlarged, first between 1908 and 1911 and again between 1929 and 1934, thus raising the water level and increasing the dam's capacity. It is also equipped with a hydroelectric plant with an installed power of more than 345 megawatts. The Aswan High Dam is located about 600 miles upstream from Cairo and 4 miles upstream from the first Aswan Dam. It is built at a place where the river is 1,800 feet wide and has steep banks of granite. The dam is designed to control the Nile water for the expansion of cultivation and for the generation of hydroelectric power and to provide protection downstream for both crops and population against unusually high floods. The work began in 1959 and was completed in 1970. The Aswan High Dam is 12,562 feet long at crest level and 3,280 feet wide at the base with a height of 364 feet above the riverbed. It has a hydroelectric plant with an installed capacity of 2,100 megawatts. Lake Nasser stretches some 310 miles upstream from the dam site, 
extending 125 miles into Sudan. The principal objective behind the construction of the Aswan High Dam is to store sufficient water in the reservoir in order to protect Egypt from the dangers of a series of years when the Nile flood is above or below the long-term average and thus to guarantee a steady flow of water from the Nile for both Egypt and Sudan. An agreement concluded in 1959 between the two countries sets a maximum amount that can be drawn per year and apportions it in a ratio of 3 to 1 with Egypt receiving the larger share. The quantities of water maintained and apportioned are based on the estimated worst possible sequence of flood and drought events over a period of 100 years, and generally, one-fourth of the total capacity of Lake Nasa is reserved as relief storage for the highest anticipated flood during such a period, called century storage. The Aswan High Dam was a source of considerable controversy during its construction and since it began operation it has continued to have its critics. Opponents have charged that silt-free water flowing below the dam has caused erosion of the downstream barrages and bridge foundations, that the loss of silt downstream has caused coastal erosion in the delta, that the overall reduction in the flow of the Nile resulting from the construction of the dam has caused the inundation of the lower reaches of the river by salt water from the Mediterranean Sea with resulting deposition of salt in the delta soils, and that the creation of Lake Nasser has caused the water table along the river to rise, resulting in waterlogging and an increase in soil salinity in some areas. Already the fish population offshore of the delta has been reduced dramatically by the loss of the nutrient-laden silt. Proponents of the dam have maintained that these harmful effects are worth the security of dependable water and power supplies. And, indeed, Egypt would have suffered a severe water shortage in 1984-88 without the dam. In Sudan the Sena Dam on the Blue Nile provides water for the Al Jazeera plain at the time of year when the water level of the Blue Nile is low. It also produces hydroelectric power. Another dam, at Jabal al on the White Nile, was completed in 1937. It was built to increase the water available to Egypt during the period of low water, January to June, and was not intended to provide irrigation water for Sudan. Other dams, including one on the Atbra at Kashm al Kerba, completed in 1964, and the Al Ruzeris Dam on the Blue Nile, 1966, have enabled Sudan to take maximum advantage of its allocation of waters from Lake Nasser. In 2011 Ethiopia began construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, GERD, on the Blue Nile River. Located in the western part of the country, near the border with Sudan, the dam was expected to be about 5,840 feet long and 475 feet high. A hydroelectric plant with an installed capacity of 6,000 megawatts was planned. Notably, in 2013 the flow of the Blue Nile was diverted so construction of the dam could proceed in earnest. The dam was the subject of much controversy, in part because of fears that it would negatively impact the water supply farther downstream in Sudan and, especially, in Egypt. In Uganda, Lake Victoria was made into a reservoir by the completion in 1954 of the Owen Falls Dam, now the Naluba Ale Dam. The dam is situated on the Victoria Nile just below the point where the lake waters flow into the river. This permits the storage of surplus water in high flood years to meet the deficits in years when the waters are low. The fall from the lake is harnessed by a hydroelectric plant that provides power for industries in Uganda and Kenya. Navigation as already mentioned, the Nile River is still a vital waterway for the transportation of people and goods especially in the flood season when motor transport is not feasible, river steamers still provide the only means of transport facilities in most of the area, especially in South Sudan and Sudan south of latitude 15 degrees n, where motor transport is not usually possible from May to November. Most of the towns in Egypt, Sudan, and South Sudan are situated on or near riverbanks. In Sudan and South Sudan, Steamer service on the Nile and its tributaries extends for about 2,400 miles. Until 1962 the only link between the northern and southern parts of Sudan, 
the present-day countries of Sudan and South Sudan, respectively, was by stern wheel river steamers of shallow draft. The main service is from Kusti to Juba. There are also seasonal and subsidiary services on the Dongola reaches of the main Nile, on the Blue Nile, up the Sobat to Gambela in Ethiopia, and up the Algaz River in the high water season. The Blue Nile is navigable only during the high water season and then only as far as Al Ruzeris. Because of the presence of the cataracts north of Khartoum, the river is navigable in Sudan only in three stretches. The first of these is from the Egyptian border to the south end of Lake Nasser. The second is the stretch between the third and the fourth cataract. The third and most important stretch extends from Khartoum southward to Juba in South Sudan. In Egypt, the Nile is navigable by sailing vessels and shallow draft river steamers as far south as Aswan. Thousands of small boats ply the Nile and Delta waterways, 